let's talk about this. I get the question all the time on my TikTok, what is the biggest difference between keeping a freshwater and a saltwater tank? Well, today I made a list, a huge list, and we're gonna cover every aspect of the difference between the two. And I'll talk about why I think one is a little bit more fun than the other, um, and there are different ways. So for those of you who are new here or who don't know me from TikTok, uh, my name is Nat and I have been keeping aquariums for almost 20 years now. I've kept a little bit of everything over all those years. Got my first aquarium when I was in fourth grade. Um, actually, no, that's not right. I got my first saltwater tank in fourth grade. My first ever fish tank was actually freshwater, but um, it was a freshwater molly tank and we didn't have it for very long in the house. So honestly, I would say my first real fish tank that I was in charge of was a saltwater reef tank, 72 gallons, and we got that when I was in fourth grade. Um, as a little kid, I was obsessed with fish, so this has been my hobby for my entire life. Um, and because I've done both sides, fresh and salt, I would love to talk to you guys about the differences between the two. What I've learned keeps them apart um, and how to kind of think about your decision when you're thinking about which side of the hobby you wanna jump into first. Okay, so the first thing on my list, the bane of every aquarium keeper's existence is the water change. If you're a beginner and you don't know what I'm talking about, it means when you drain some of the water out of your tank, let's say you drain down to right about there, and you've gotta fill it back up. Now, this is gonna be extremely obvious to start, but with a freshwater water change, it is really easy to go get fresh water from your bathroom sink, from your refrigerator, from a lake nearby, it's very easy. Salt water, however, has to be made unless you literally live on a dock and have an ocean next to you, which isn't really the case for a lot of us. Um, and so what makes salt water kind of a pain on this front is that salt water buckets are really, really heavy. So lifting a huge box of salt water, if you're someone that's not strong or um, just have any issues lifting heavy items, that can be a huge pain. It's also really important that every time you make salt water for your saltwater aquarium, you have to check the levels of the salt in that water. That is called salinity. Folks, sometimes it can be really tough to calibrate your salinity. There are tools like hydrometers and refractometers that can make this a little bit easier, but you still aren't always sure that you've got it just right. And changing the salinity in a tank can be really detrimental to the fish. So that's the first kind of knock on salt water, I'll say, is water changes in fresh water so much easier. It literally takes me five minutes. Okay, the next thing on the list is we're talking about how you would decorate your aquarium. So on the freshwater side, you can pretty easily acquire plants, rocks, wood from your natural surroundings, as long as you make sure you clean them and make sure you have the right types of rocks and wood, which I can cover in another video you're kind of good to go. So rocks and wood can be literally free. But yeah, on the saltwater side, you have to pretty much go with live rock or reef ready rock. That's sometimes man-made, sometimes it's pulled from the ocean. Either way, it can be pretty expensive. Um, it can go for several dollars a pound. So that rock adds up and really adds to the overall cost of setting up a saltwater aquarium. So that's talking about decorating your aquarium, but let's talk next about setting up the rest of your aquarium, so filtration. There is a huge difference in the level of filtration that I think a freshwater tank often needs versus a saltwater tank. Um, obviously this depends on the type of fish you're keeping and how many fish you're keeping per gallon. So as we all know, goldfish get super crazy with the amount of waste they produce. So sometimes a goldfish filtration setup might actually be a lot crazier than a saltwater setup but the cost between the two types of filtration can vary dramatically. In a freshwater setup, you're typically going with some kind of canister filter or a hang on the back filter. These are really easy to find at PetSmart, Petco. They go for pretty cheap. Now, if you're talking about saltwater filtration, people get really crazy with filtration. We're talking about multiple types of media. So sponges that are really particular about the size and like nanoparticles of sponge that they come with. We're talking about filter socks, um, filter rollers. I could literally go on and on about the number of ways that you can filter a saltwater aquarium. Obviously you can do all of those things on the freshwater side, but a lot of people just don't because freshwater fish, the parameters don't really need to be as specific. But if you're keeping a saltwater aquarium, especially with coral, it is really important that you kind of create this like living microbiome. Um, and so in order to do that, stuff gets really expensive. 
things like algae reactors or um, carbon reactors on the saltwater side go for hundreds of dollars. And that's just like one piece of equipment in the lineup of like maybe five different types of things that you might need for a saltwater aquarium. I think that's really something that people don't factor in when they're setting up their saltwater aquarium is just how much the actual filter filtration types will cost. And it adds up really quickly. Okay, continuing on the list. Um, let's talk about the actual fish and plants and coral that you would keep in both sides of the hobby. On the freshwater side, they are notoriously less colorful fish that you can keep than you would see on the saltwater side. And I don't mean this as a knock to freshwater keepers because you still have beautiful aquariums. I think discus are arguably the most beautiful fish in the entire hobby, even though I don't keep them myself. Um, but definitely on the freshwater side, you'll go to a store and you'll see just tanks and tanks and tanks of a lot of grays and taupes and a lot of more neutral colors on the fish themselves. But on the saltwater side, you get beautiful bright colors. Like the yellow tang, for example, is notoriously super bright yellow. You walk into a room and you can see that fish from across the room. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind in terms of what aesthetic you're going for in your own house. If you're looking for something that's more eye-catching and colorful, and you're more of a colorful type of person, saltwater might be more suited for you. But I will say on the freshwater side, even though the fish might not be as colorful, they are like three or four times as easier to keep. I really feel like a lot of the problems that people run into on the saltwater side of the hobby are that there are some really vicious diseases that can wipe out an entire tank, which on the saltwater side could mean hundreds of dollars of fish because, oh, that's a huge point I haven't covered yet. Saltwater fish, most of the time, start off at a minimum of $20. So imagine each fish you add to your aquarium being at least 20 bucks. On the freshwater side, there are so many types of fish you can buy for under $20. In fact, a $20 freshwater fish, on my from my perspective, is actually considered like a big buy. I'm like, ooh, getting crazy. I'm spending some money on a freshwater fish here. It's more than 20 bucks. Um, and saltwater fish, I mean, the yellow tang that I used to have in my aquarium, if I had to, if I was going to resell that yellow tang it was worth hundreds of dollars probably. Um, so fish can get really, really expensive, but because they are more expensive, this is another point I want to cover. The resale value of saltwater tends to hold its value a lot better. So for example, when I break down a tank and I go to set up a new tank, if I have saltwater used equipment, I find that I'm able to get a little bit more money dollar per dollar on that than I am on my used freshwater equipment. If I'm selling, for example, like a used 55 gallon standard freshwater tank, I'm probably gonna get a dollar per gallon or less, but on the saltwater side, because the equipment retails for a lot more money, I find that it holds its value a lot better. It's kind of like buying a Chanel purse, like it's designer, everyone it has a brand, everyone knows kind of what its value is. On the freshwater side, it's like, oh, it's used, it's like, like goodbye. <laughs> okay, so this is a huge one when you're thinking about the trade-offs between the two. Time, how much time do you have to really take care of this tank? On the freshwater side, I think I spend 30 seconds a day feeding my fish. I keep the fish food right next to the tank. I have a little measuring spoon. I drop in there feeding and away I go. Um, most of my tanks on the freshwater side are pretty much well balanced at this point. I don't really have to worry about them very much. On the saltwater side, um, you have to do so much more testing of your water. So weekly, if not, you know, a couple times a week water testing to make sure that your parameters are in the right ranges. This is really important if you're keeping coral, um, things like you have to test for like eight different things. We're talking calcium, alkalinity, magnesium. It just, it really all adds up. And each of those tests can take somewhere between five to 10 minutes to actually run before you can figure out what the value is. So that really kind of adds up to your total time management that you've allotted for your aquarium. Another thing I wanna talk about that I don't think I've seen people cover in other videos is the gross factor of keeping a freshwater versus a saltwater aquarium. There's a huge difference in my opinion. On the freshwater side, you don't really get like gross, creepy, potentially killer things in your aquarium that can just like appear and kill you overnight. Um, on the saltwater side, there are actually a lot of health risks is what I will say. So for example, there are certain types of coral that contain something called a palytoxin. These are corals that are called palythoas, um, part of the zoanthid family. And um, they can literally nuke your house if you disturb them in the wrong way. So kind of scary, I don't know. Do you wanna like wake up and have a health 
emergency issue because your coral decided to have a bad day? Uh, I don't know. It definitely is something I have kept in mind when I've stocked my saltwater aquariums. Other critters that freak me out are bristle worms. They are little worms that are often representative of an actual healthy aquarium on the saltwater side. But if you pick up a rock the wrong way and your hand, your bare hand actually touches a bristle worm, it can be really painful and can cause a rash. So there are just a lot of gross, creepy things, creepy crawly things that appear on the saltwater side that you have to deal with and you have to think about every time you put your hands in your aquarium. I never really think about that when I'm cleaning my planted tank. I'm like, oh, there's a snail. I accidentally touched a snail. Like I'm not gonna die, but I could die on my saltwater side. Yeah, <laughs> not to be dramatic. One thing to think about too, in terms of your aquarium hobby experience that is often overlooked is the type of community that you will be joining. I have found that on the freshwater side of the hobby, a lot of people tend to pick one lane and really just stay in it. So for example, there are people that are just cichlid people and all they keep are cichlids. They have eight cichlid tanks and they are in a million cichlid Facebook groups. They're cichlid experts. Then there are discus people and goldfish people and planted tank aquascapers. And there's so many different really specific niche, niche communities that are just full of knowledge about one particular thing. I find on the saltwater side um, that it's not as niched out. So there's basically two sides of the saltwater hobby. There's fish only keepers, which means they don't keep coral. They only keep fish in their aquariums and they like to keep typically larger predator style tanks with more eels or puffer fish, etc. And then there are like the hardcore reef keepers that collect rare coral and their entire life is spent researching coral and figuring out how to make coral grow in their aquarium. Um, but other than that, it's not like people really pick one coral and like only use that type of coral in their tank. So there's not like whole Facebook groups for like soft corals. I mean, I'm sure there are, but it's just really not how the community operates. So if you're someone that likes to really obsess about one really niche thing, the freshwater side of the hobby might be um, a better fit for you. And if you're someone that just likes broad knowledge and you just want to learn a lot about everything, the saltwater aquarium might be um, a better fit for you. Something to think about. Something else that I found as a differentiator between the two sides of the hobby is snails and other called so-called cleanup crew members seem to matter a lot more on the saltwater side of the hobby. I would never start a saltwater aquarium if I didn't have like eight snails, two hermit crabs, a sea cucumber, like 800 different things. On the freshwater side of the hobby, you can get away with almost no cleanup crew. Um, I mean, I say that obviously a healthy aquarium that's balanced would have a cleanup crew, but I find that it's way less important um, to start a freshwater aquarium with that cleanup crew already in place. Um, if you don't have a cleanup crew on the saltwater side, I just find that your algae and everything else can just get really quickly out of whack. So I think the difference that I would sum up between the two is it's really easy to kind of kickstart your microbiome on the freshwater side. On the saltwater side, this could literally take years of time and a super specific lineup of small creatures that can kind of just help your aquarium reach maturity. Um, I find that it takes a lot longer for a saltwater aquarium to mature to where you don't have to clean the glass every single day and clean hair algae off of rocks, etc. cetera, um, on the saltwater side. Ah, so that was a lot that I just covered um, in this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I will kind of just sum this up by saying that I've kept a little bit of everything in my, you know, almost 20 years of aquarium keeping. And they really are both fantastic sides of the hobby to participate in. So I'm not gonna end this video and say like, you should go be freshwater, you should go be saltwater. I would say, go back through the video, think really hard about each of the points that I made and then kind of decide for yourself what you think is a better fit for your lifestyle um, and your time, literally. So it really, it, a lot of it comes down to time and money. So think about that. Um, and I hope again, you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. I am new on YouTube. I have a fantastic, loving fish fam over on TikTok, on Fish Talk TikTok. Um, shout out to everyone who's followed me over there. I love y'all to death. Y'all have been so supportive of me. Um, and I can only hope that FishTube will also come and meet me. So anyways, like and subscribe. Um, and I hope I will see everyone soon.